everyone in high elo goes conquer right now on akali if you're asking me how would i 1v5 a game in silver in gold as akali I would run Electrocute. The reason being that I could secure so many kills with Electrocute that the Conqueror wouldn't even matter. Right. The extra laning power. <laughs> because right now, like, if you had Electrocute, you could just flash auto Q and he dies. Yeah, Ignite this is, what I, this is what I tried to do here, but I, I mechanically... Teemo. I modeled the minion. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you <laughs> auto was... the minion, and then you're in tower, then you canceled your auto frame on him, and then you didn't Q. It's not that I'm telling you that Akali should run Conqueror, should run Electrocute. It's that I want you to think about it and maybe try it out for a game in both ways because Conqueror is honestly not good in early game. And a lot of what you were saying about how you feel like you need to pressure, feel like you need to roam, that's telling me you have a problem with playing champions that are weaker in early game. You hit me in the feels because I was thinking about that yesterday. I, I was like, I suck at scaling champions. Because, like, like, Conqueror Akali, you know the whole point of Conqueror? It's to get that Gunblade, it's to get that, like, one item, two item spike, you get Morello, you get Leandries, and now you're an unkillable split pushing monster. What sounds more appealing to you? Being someone that's unkillable in a split push? After 20 minutes, or 15 minutes, whatever, right? Yeah. Or someone that gets five kills in lane because they have extra bursts to kill their lane opponent because they're bad. Which one of those appeal more to your playstyle, you know? Like the second one, yes, basically just making It's my not that I think Electrocute Akali is better, but it's that I think Electrocute Akali is better in this ELO range with your playstyle. You understand? Yeah, that's what I want to hear. What's better in my ELO? In you your know, yeah. ELO, I think that damage is more important than a split push that might not happen because maybe people are too tilted. Why did I take this Q? That, that's retarded. Why did I do that? I took it into a massive mini win. So this was stupid, but mechanically it was played wrong. So here, you cancel your auto, then you don't use Q as it comes back up. After you should use this Q, you would get move speed, and it would enable you to walk this way. So you Q again, and you get a move speed buff off your Q. That being said, like, this was... I mean, it's just not a trade you want to take. You know? This was very bad, yes. Very bad. Because now you're in a situation where if he just cues you, you die, but you have this big wave coming in, and... You know what I'm getting at. Yeah, I get you, yeah. And it's not that this Gangplank is playing super well. You understand, like, this is all caused by this thing, and then this mistake. Shot. So, like, this is two mistakes, and then he walks into the tower and he takes a shot, and now he's scared of doing the play on you. And it's like, well, you're making mistakes, and he's making mistakes, and there's mistakes all over the place, right? Right. But that's what I'm trying to tell you. Everyone is making so many mistakes that if you just punish a few of them, if you don't make quite as many yourself, I mean, do you just win every game pretty much? Yeah. You know? Okay. Like, why... It's just very strange. Like this, for example, right? He should have just backed. Like, he had it. Like, he had the lane one already. Even here, he can instantly just use ult when you go in. He can do an attack move on the ground and it will hit you even if you shroud. He can ult, it will proc your sheen, right? He doesn't need to right. use Q. Like, to me He's... at least, I think your Eing in here was actually inting, but I think that he didn't res respond to it correctly. So, um... That, and that's the thing, like, that's a, that's, that happens, it, the reason I do these things is because it happens on a regular basis. That's why I keep doing it, because people are terrible. Yeah, but it's both sides. Like, you following this E in high elo, this would have been terrible, but in low elo, it's kind of okay, you know? Yeah. Because you can almost expect they're going to outplay themselves. Unfortunately. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I get what you're saying as in, the, as in the aspect of, I can do this same thing, but I can also do it smart. Yeah, exactly. You can, like, take the right timings to go for these trades. It's not that you can't go for random kills, because I'm telling you, you can get, like, five kills a yep. game in lane, ten kills a game in lane, even more in the CeeLo, you know? Definitely, because they, they did come back and they do the same thing. They don't know how to play safe. They don't know what item advantages mean. They don't know what item advantages mean. They don't know how to build the right items at the right time. And see, he does it again. Like I'm He like, takes a random tower today. shot. He's getting low. You have ultimate right now. You can just all in him and you'll kill him in this timing. And now, does it even matter that you have 30 CS and took those poor trades earlier? But now you're ahead, like 100 gold, you know? But I could have done all of that. I could have done this exact same thing, 
put a smarter way of... But you could have done this exact same thing slightly better, had 10 more CS maybe, be 2-0 or 3-0 instead of 2-1, and one, you know? And exactly. how does this look to you? Does it look like, oh, if I had that, if I had an extra longsword right now, if he had not this ruby crystal, right? If he only had the sheen and longsword, don't you think it would have been a lot easier to solo carry the game? It's, yeah, exactly. Definitely. A lot easier. This roam is okay, but you have to keep in mind, because your wave isn't set up beforehand, that Gangplank will be able to get a bit ahead of you off of it. I, I basically just failed the wave for him. Yeah. Even though I actually should have cleared out more minions, because it's still going to crash into the tower, I think. Yeah, so you do lose out on a wave. This roam was... I don't think you should have done that one, honestly, but it's kind of okay, again... Minion farm isn't worth the most right now. But if you look, you're down 600 gold now, just to tell you. This is one of the funniest things about minion gold, tower plates, and shutdown gold. I want you to think about our discussion earlier. Yeah. He is up on you right now. 550 gold, right? Right. You have a 300 gold shutdown. Just look at this, you have a 300 gold shutdown, but he's up 550 gold. So if you die, mm -hmm. he hits at 600 gold. I mean, you know, he'll be up like over a thousand gold on you, right? Exactly. Yeah. And that's because you have kills. You understand like how much you lost from this roam that didn't work, you know? Mm -hmm. Because the roam was done at a bad timing. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to show you, that like it hurts you a lot when you do a roam in the current situation without actually finishing it. Now this is something that Conqueror Kali is able to do, and if you were playing um if you were playing Electrocute Akali, you wouldn't have even came close to killing Nidalee, just to tell you. Because you know the reason you almost kill her is from the sustain. You know? Yeah, from the Conqueror Kill, yeah. I played it the a little thing bit that well. I want to say though is look at the mechanics. You don't turn auto. You should auto here. Then you Q, right? This is good. You don't reset your passive. Okay, you see this? Yeah. You use the Q. You have your passive up. You can walk here, right? I can't show the circle because it doesn't show up on practice tool, right? Mm -hmm. But you know the Akali circle? It's like right here. For some reason, yeah. you don't walk out of the circle to proc the passive. Just to tell you, this wouldn't have worked if you were playing Electrocute Akali. Electrocute Akali does not have the same staying power in a fight, right? Yeah. You don't get the presence of mind proc to get energy back. You don't have Conqueror giving you healing and free AP after the fight has gone on for a while. The reason Conqueror Akali is so good, it's because of that power to 2v1, right? Electrocute right. Akali is just an assassin. You're killing one person, it's one and done. It's not one is better than the other. Well, maybe Conqueror is better, but it's not that it's always better, right? I think what you're saying is that Electrocute, I, I see the difference in between both of them, I guess, in the 2v1 potential. Mm -hmm. But I guess in this elo, judging by basically what you said, that probably... I think can, Electrocute is better in this elo because I think you can get 20 kills again. Yeah, you can you can abuse people. In, in yeah, you can just, five. like, abuse the fact that they're bad, you know? Yeah, and see, this is what I'm talking about here. Like, he, instead of freezing the wave, I, I think I don't think I was in. I was in uh, watching top lane when he did. Yeah, that's why I took that barrel. But instead of freezing the lane here and, and, and denying me because I have no ulti, I have no flash. He just like, shoves it in. He just shoves it in. Like I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, like you're Timo. in your own lane right now. Yeah, because you can't <laughs> walk up to him at all. Exactly, I can't, and he's still just pushing. If you don't have ult, you can't fight him, and he's still going to just. Bush, for some reason, he's not using the move speed to run at you with a Q, you know? Yeah, I used to be a Gangplank main when I first started, so I know how to play this matchup, because I'm like, why isn't he just auto with the Phage and run up to me and Q me? I actually think Gangplank counters Akali really hard. He does. Because I think he's a bit too tanky for Akali to kill in the early game. I think in mid-late game, Akali is going to pretty much always this, beat this Gangplank. This is how bad this GP is, look. <laughs> okay. I'm like, what the Teemo. fuck is this shit? He's trolling. What? He throws out another one. I'm like, what the Teemo. fuck is he doing? I mean, it's 200. And then IQ you get hit this. by it. Exactly. <laughs> and then you I'm walk like, back into it. All right. <laughs> I'm like, Kane, I, you see I'm not coming, right? Wait, 
And then you miss the tank minion. All right, I see, I see. And then you guys get the kill, and it works out. <laughs> that's that's this elo in a nutshell, dude. <laughs> yes, it is. is yes, it is. And for some reason, you have a red sweeper right now. Because uh, I was planning on roaming, but that didn't work out as planned. So normally, I would say actually for a roamer, green sweeper. I mean, green ward like warding totem. Just to take vision, like here, take vision, like here, right? Yeah. That's usually, or even ward the lane. I think that normally is more valuable for a roamer than having the red sweep. To have the knowledge of where people are, right? Right. I think a red sweep is great after laning phase. I just don't think it's worth giving up so much vision for your team by having a red sweep in the laning phase. Again, that's personal opinion, right? Especially yeah. because in this elo, I don't think people really look at wards. They don't ward. I, I do it just because there are some supports that are smart. No, but even they if they go. ward, a lot of the times, if they see you on a ward, they don't react. You know? Because Mordekaiser are ints. Yeah, Mordekaiser but I, I just walks into their tower, you know? They, they don't have mini-maps, basically, right? Yeah, pretty much. Most people, they might look at their mini-map once every 20 seconds, so... You know, if you walk bot lane, let's say, you go over two wards on the way there. There's like a 50% chance they won't notice you. And a lot of people don't play with sound on, so they don't hear the pings. They, they, That's they, they, true. They, also, a lot of people have a bad habit of listening to music really loud while they play. Yeah, I like to hear my, I like to hear my teammates ping. Even though I've actually been starting to get into a really, really... Yeah, that Darius is retarded. Um, he, they, I've gotten into a habit of just fuel, fuel me, of full muting people you full muting the game yeah like i play i play so much like i started to realize how yes you, i am the most untiltable person in this game i will say that and i say it proud i don't tilt mm -hmm. uh but at the same time you'd be surprised at um how often how often people what people say subconsciously affect what you do yeah like and then i started to realize that and i was like holy Timo. Man, now that i'm full muting i'm playing my game now I'm mm -hmm. carrying now because I'm not letting these tilted Timo. Yeah, affect the way you play. Exactly. So I was like, dude, this is OP. This is like a cheat. <laughs> like I was like, this game is so much mental, it's insane. So something I want to show you here is again the mechanics. Remember what we were talking about with the uh, walking? So you get this Q, but then you just walk forward. But remember, Akali gets a speed buff every time she lands a Q, and then every time she breaks her circle, right? Right. So if you use this Q and then you step back to here, rocking the passive, then you walk forward again, you're going to have the move speed to chase him. But because you try to walk in a straight line forward, you don't get your passive proc. You see that? Yeah, I didn't get it yet. So you get it when you walk away, but then you waste your E on Gangplank. And then you and don't use the passive there, you miss the auto, and then you don't have your passive up, so you can't get a passive off that Q, so you're missing another auto, right? So he should be basing right And then you had ult, so if you did those auto, this auto and then Q auto, then you could have ulted and you're going to kill this guy, and these guys are low enough that you can probably kill them too. Yeah, I could have just walked up to Echo already. Oh my god, there's so much I could have done! So like, here I see you getting like two kills, three kills, and instead it's like, oh I'm backing off, I'm going for mid wave. It's like... Why didn't I kill him here when he walks up? What am I doing? I don't know, you could have just ulted in, but... And then, what like, you I don't do? walk, you're not procking your passive, man. Look at this. The same, right? Right. You're right here, you walk up, right? You're walking up. And you're still walking up. You should walk here to proc the passive and then walk oh, forward. So get the move speed buff, the move you know? Speed. Yeah. And then you have R, so you get the move speed buff and then you R forward and get the auto. And then you E because your E will be up, and then you and won't with the R2, yeah, with the E2, right? And he's dead. And he's just dead. And there's nothing he can do about it. Because you're Akali and you're OP, right? Right. But instead, maybe he dies anyway, maybe he doesn't, but you're tower diving him, and you go for one for one and burn your flash? Yeah, I thought I could make it out of there, but no. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, okay, you did it like this, but if you do it here, well, then you can use the R2 instead of into the tower to the side, right? And I could have saved my flash and not traded. 
And then you could have either saved your flash or you could have not gotten one for one. Because remember what we talked about for one for one ing because of the way shutdown gold works. I don't think you had a shutdown in that instance, but if you did have a shutdown, one for ones aren't worth it, you know? And you lost this wave, so a one for one isn't worth it, even if it's not a shutdown, right? And giving kills to GP is probably not a good idea. I mean, GP scales well, you scale well. It's not as much that as the wave, because you lost this whole wave off the dive. It's one for one, but wave advantage is on his side. Yeah, it's gonna push back to him now. Yeah, so he gets this farm too. And now you don't have ultimate and flash to fight this dragon, which, um... I think you're... Who got this dragon? Vayne got it? Okay, so your team got the dragon anyway. That was kind of okay, right? But... That's not okay because of something you did, you know? Yeah. So now you're seeing you're six and three, but maybe you could have been like 40, 50 CS higher than this. You could have had none of these deaths. You could have had like four or five more kills at this point, right? Right. So quick question. I guess you yeah. can pause it. Um, quick question. So based on my play style, instead of a colleague, would Fizz be a better option? Because I was thinking about that. Fizz is more similar to Talon, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. Akali is more similar to Zed. Yeah, I was about to say, because I like Talon playstyle probably is better for me. So I was last couple of days I started for some odd reason attracting towards Fizz at the more I played Talon. Yeah. I just started thinking Fizz, 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 and I'm like, why am I thinking Fizz? And I think I started subconsciously thinking that they have pretty much the same kit. They do the same thing. The they best run thing in. I could suggest for Fizz is if you want to see some gameplay of it, Brogan has been playing it a bit on stream in the last, like, week or two. Brogan. Brogan, yeah, on the, like, Henrik Harrison or something like that account. It's an NA challenger. Yeah, I, I saw it on OPGG. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Or, so, I mean, Fizz doesn't really have many mechanics. He just has the E-Flash, right? I'm sure you know about that. Yeah, I've done that before then, when I was in silver. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, he doesn't have mechanics, really. Actually, Akali has a mechanic where you can R flash to move the damage. I don't know if you know that. I've never done it before. I'm pretty sure there were opportunities I could have done it, but I've never... Because, like, you can do your R2, right? And let's say there's a low health target here and here. You can R2 here, and then at the end point, you can flash here, and it'll hit both. Oh, that's crazy. So a couple times I've gotten like a double kill by doing something like that in a fight, you know? And at this point, like this game, it's not over. It's not like one-sided, but that's the problem I have, you know? My problem is precisely that it's not one-sided, that it's not over. That you're still in mid lane at 20 minutes instead of going to a side lane. Like right. what's the point of being mid at this point? Why aren't you top lane? Why aren't you bot lane? I'm just they promoting ARAM basically. Yes, but what's the purpose of this? That's what I want you to get in the habit of asking. Ask yourself, why do I do something instead of just doing it? Yeah, because I'm, I'm starting to see how- Timo. Like, when you actually use your brain. Like, it's it's actually insane how this game mm -hmm. not autopilot. Exactly. Autopilot's a very big buzzword, but it's true. Most people aren't thinking while they play. They just play. And, like, there is an argument for it, like, you're trying to enjoy yourself as a game, right? But ultimately, if you want to win, you have to think about your decisions. You can't just make decisions. And not in, like, a bad way. Don't flame yourself. Don't, like, flame your teammates. A mistake a lot of people make is when they get really good at the game, they start understanding the game really well, they get in a habit of flaming everything they think is wrong, you know? Yeah, I don't even type to my teammates. I might say it. I might say some flame Timo. to myself, but I don't. I don't show it in game. Like that is a. And very, that's the best attitude bad. to have, you know. Yeah, because because honestly, flame, it's hard to take it seriously when you know how many mistakes okay. you yourself make. To to take it seriously when you're pointing out the mistakes of others, you know. Yeah, I focus on my play. Like I've carried a lot of games off of that. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm doing this good based off of me being boosted as I am. Imagine if I would have actually implemented Timo. That you, Timo. Dude, I'd be giga. Dude, I wouldn't even be smurfing. I'd be giga smurfing. Like, I'd be going twenty and zero. Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm, I'm have, I'm, I can, I'm starting to see, remember and see all the pointless deaths that I've had that have given the enemy team opportunities to come back into the game. And I'm sitting here thinking, well, my bot lane did go zero and thirteen, that? so maybe that might be the reason. I would. No, you lost this game because you, you gave. The bot lane that you could have shut down 
because they weren't really all that big. You gave them five different bounties when you were worth four or five hundred gold. No, this is this has been a thing for a while, and I think it's just started to come to light. That's why it's just like work. people are, are finally starting to understand. And this is the thing where like there's different levels of expertise in the game, and there's different levels of expertise on individual champions between different people. So, so like, as a an auto field player might play like very badly in one role or they might play very well and that depends entirely on how much they know about the game you know right right that's crazy dude i've never thought about any of this timo ever like it, it bothers me at the fact that i haven't thought about any of this like why i thought i was doing good i mean you are doing good for your elo but to yeah. improve to the next level you just need to think a bit more right Think a bit more, yeah. And, and that's how it always works. It's just a bit more. It's a bit higher. The thought process is a bit higher. The decision making, right? Yeah. I'm not going I'm... to tell you get 10 CS a minute. And I'm not going to tell you you get zero deaths in your games. I'm not going to tell you, hey, you have to play only the meta champions because that's not how this works. That's how it works at a very layman's level, you know? Exactly. Yeah. You can't Maybe from a diamond much. player's perspective, that's how it works, but not for mine. I mean, dude, you've expanded my Timo. thinking to a point to where. Timo. Dude, like, I'm sitting here laid back. I was, like, when I first started this session, I was leaning forward, you know, I was chilling. Now I'm sitting back in my Timo. chair with my two fingers on my forehead, like, what the f Timo. Oh, funny enough about that, that you mention it, um, a couple little things about... We lost this game because uh, I was trying to be that shot mm -hmm. caller for my team because I knew what to do, and they just didn't seem like they wanted to listen. I don't know if it's because they were tilted or they were just because they were fed and they were like, oh... You're saying you know what to do, right? But yeah. This is mid lane, right? Right. You guys have Baron. You guys have Infernal Soul. You have a wave coming into you bot lane. Why are you guys five manning mid instead of pressuring multiple lanes when you have a split pusher like Akali that no one can match? Well, I take that back. I'm a Emo. idiot. You see what I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you, you guys get Elder here. Soul, right? I, Look at people's health when this fight starts. Just just think about this. Mordecai's are half health when you walk mid. Right. You, two thirds uh, health. Kane, half health. Vayne, half health, right? This is terrible. Everyone is low on resource on your team. And you just got Infernal Soul. Why don't you use the fact that you got Infernal Soul instead of throwing gold back? Like, right now, the game is pretty even. I believe after this fight. They get a bit ahead of you. I'm just going to skip through it because I don't really care what happens in the fight. I care about the fact that the fight was taken at all, you know? But now they're up 2.4k, right? So even when your teammates don't listen to you, you do what you know is right. So is it better for you to make a decent play? Like, Because I've heard it's better to make a bad play with your team than to make a good play by yourself. That is true. But you can influence the bad decisions your team take to be like a bit less bad what i mean by that is like let's say your team is going to go here right yeah let's say either way they're going to take a fight here which one is better taking the fight here you going in immediately and dying losing right. the baron or you shoving a wave you have baron to shove with right right so they kill your teammates but then you're up to here right you have a baron with you they have to reset to answer so they're in a choice they either shove mid with two people, yep. three people, they match you with one or two people. If they send only one, you're gonna die for them, right? You have Infernal Soul. Exactly, I'm gonna kill you. you only serve I'm gonna kill you, you're in a 1v1 with against me, and I have an Infernal Soul. Well, what's better? Going into the fight trying to make it work, and kind of inting to try to force it to work, or pressuring the side lane, having them send two people, and then your team fights a 4v3. Or a 4v4, in which case you kill the side lane and get the inhibitor. Right? I'm, I'm playing this all on in my mind, and this game could have went so much differently. Now that you Like, there are that. so many kills that are missing. There's so much about Gold. split pushing that you're missing. Because, like, let me say this. If you're playing a different champion, your play style might work. Akali is not... She's good at 5v5ing, but not on tower. She's good at 5v5ing in the river, in the jungle, you know? Yeah, places where bushes she can outplay. Hey, places where there's no tower to reveal the stealth and you can dive the back line. So here, again, you're half health before the fight, you get picked off, right? And that's GG. 
And you guys actually just lose off of this pretty much, but... What are you even doing in the front of the fight? Why aren't you flanking them? Why is this wave not controlled? When Kane is top lane shoving this wave, right? He's understanding, oh, I need to split maybe. Maybe he's just tilted. He's 3 and 7. I don't know. And don't know, he's he not really the split pusher, right? But right. why are you guys dancing in mid when Kane is in top and when you don't have wave control in bot side, you know? We have no business being right there. Like, Vayne is off to the side for some reason. She should be here, and you should be maybe here or here, you know? Exactly. Like, the fact oh, that you're even wait, here wait, makes wait, wait. no sense. I just, uh, it dawned up on me. So that's why I've seen, like, these Smurf Kha'Zixes and these Smurf Zeds. They're Smurf waiting Talons. for the moment the enemy team overextends, right? And, they, and they, then they're, they're, they're going like... to see that overextend and punish it. Remember how in last game... I showed you that moment when you were Talon, right? Warwick jumps in, and then you jump on Jinx here. Yeah. Well, you did that because Warwick jumped in, you know? Yeah. He had no business taking that fight. Well, if they <laughs> go in for this fight, and let's say you're not with your team, they jump on Mordekaiser instead of you, right? Yeah. Well, Mordekaiser's a bit tankier than you. He would live a bit longer. Then you come in from the side, you come in from behind, they burn their cooldowns forward on Mord. Can you not just kill Jin or kill Nidalee? I could just obliterate Jin. I do. If I play, like imagine I instead of de or... being dead here, you're coming out here when this fight is starting, and Vayne also has a flank, right? So that team fight's won. GG. Potentially won. Yeah. I mean, Kane is split pushing for some reason, but you see what I mean? Uh, yeah. Now I see why, like all of these Smurfs that I've been playing against, like they find these angles. It's that, because like, they're seeing it coming expect. beforehand, though. They're thinking like, my champion, I can't go in from the front. I'm an assassin. I'm just going to die, right? Exactly. I need an angle. That's why I have a red sweeper. Just red sweep, and that way they know. I know. Hey, there's no words where I am, right? That's why instead of this door and shield, you should have pink words at this right. point, right? Exactly. Oh my god. So like, I've always. And the fact is, not all, not alone, can you flank them. You also apply so much pressure when they don't know where you are. They exactly. It's the same thing with a roam, though. The mind game. Where, like, if they don't know you're there, are they going to go in? Maybe they will, but they'll second-guess it, and that will buy time for a split push, right? Exactly. So just by you sitting in a bush with a pink ward not showing on the map, they're like, oh, where's Where's Talon? this guy? And maybe they're thinking about it. Maybe one of them thinks about it, and the other is thinking about, hey, let's just go in, and they have an asymmetric engagement, you know? Yeah, and they're all The less information you give your enemies, the more they don't know how they can respond to it. Timo. Smart gameplay. God, intelligent gameplay, not brute force gameplay. It's not about mechanics. It's really not. It's just about decision making. There is mechanics here, I right? They're stepping with Akali where the steps are slightly wrong, but that's not that's not why you're losing, you know? And look, you'll have all of the time in the world to work on your mechanics. As you climb, your mechanics will just get better from playing the champions, you know? Yeah. It's just like years and years of questions flooded into my mind and all of them got answered based off of simple like i've always wondered like how the f are these smurfs getting these angles should i be flanking like i, I know what to do now. yeah like, i mean you should know what to do i'm sure you've played the game enough the problem is just not thinking about it enough you know yeah the runes aren't the issue to be honest with you the builds aren't the issue. Ultimately, the decision-making that you do with them is usually what's going to be the problem. So I actually see you did play an Electrocute Akali game, and it didn't go over that well. But I think that maybe your issue with Akali is more the stepping than it is the runes or the build. Like, I'm telling you, you're lacking, like... You're probably missing out on 200, 300 damage. I'm sure you've seen the circle come up every time you use Akali's Q, you know? Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. So you step you outside the circle out in any direction. And the way you want to think about it is you always step away from it. So let's say I'm going into a trade, right? I'm going to turn off this stuff. I Q. I step out, I step in. I Q, I immediately step behind myself and I step in, right? If I have my abilities, though, there's a few ways you can change this a bit. You can Q, step out, step in, which is the normal. You can Q... Step out, R forward, auto, right? E, mark, auto, ult. And then you auto again, you Q again, and then you do this, right? Everything on Akali actually chains into the other abilities, and it's kind of beautiful in a way. 
and why like really high level Akale play is so nice to watch. You only get a speed buff for half a second, I think. There's another thing where when you have the R2, right? If you have an E mark, something you can do is you can actually break the E with your R2, just to tell you, or your R1. Well, imagine you're trying to get, yeah. you don't want to go all the way to their tank. Well, you see how you can break your E? Yeah, you can break it with R, yeah. So, something to keep in mind about breaking with R is, let's say you're playing against a tank, you want to get to this guy that's out here, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say you E one of the melee guys. You get the E right. on this one, right? Yeah. yeah. And what you can actually do, something like this, right? Step yeah. out, auto Q, ult instantly, get another, and then back out, right? You can use them as a stepping stone to your target. Pretty much, yeah. And then another mechanic you can do in lane is you can do EW like that, right? So like, if I do it like this, right, I'll get it off. But if I mess up slightly, I won't get off that second Q. Yeah, if, if any kind of hesitation. It's not that Akali is not broken, because Akali and Irelia, they're still really broken, but they're so hard to execute properly. Because of the mechanical prowess. The reason Talon has such a good win rate, why Fizz has such a high win rate, even Malzar has a really high win rate right now, it's because they're so simple, you know? Yeah, like, I think right now, until you say that my micro is good enough, I need to focus as, you, as from those games, it's clear, my macro, my macro needs a lot of work and my micro does too, but I feel like if I can get my macro, my micro will be with it. Yeah. So uh, I want to focus, I want to play, a, I want to simplize my champion pool. If you need me, just message me on Discord anytime. I'll notice like probably the same day. Um, yeah. Usually pretty Trust quickly. Me. Sometimes it takes me a tiny bit because my, I might be busy when you first message me. Uh, it's all good, dude. Like, I, I got a lot to chew on. I got a lot to work on. I got a lot. I have a lot. Yeah, so, no dude. problem. So definitely, like, hopefully on next session, whatever that is. That's pretty much it for today's session, right? We got a yeah. two-hour session through, and I think we covered quite a lot. I am. I hope this was, like, pretty useful for you. That, this is beyond... What kind of question is that? <laughs> it's like hearing it from, like... The horse's mouth, a mid laner that is high tier, current high tier, plays the game frequently every day. Mm -hmm. Like it felt so good to hear that. It it it, it, it it's a confidence. Yeah, no problem. Like, it's, it's amazing hearing it from someone who actually knows what I go through.